turn it. We both know why you're here. We're gonna start out with a life cast as well as some clay tools. I love these tools with like the balls on top and the kind of pointed ends. Uh, we're also gonna use some liquid latex and some cotton rounds. Also a makeup sponge. So I'm gonna take one of my cheapo makeup sponges and I'm going to put basically, I don't know, two or three coats of the liquid latex on there just to start so we have like a nice base. And I unroll like one of the one of the cotton rounds into kind of a worm shape so I can form it to high one. I decided that I'm going to make kind of a zombie. Um, I have a couple zombie reference images on my phone over there that I'm kind of going off of and I'm going to pull like whatever my favorite features are. So a lot of this is going to be just, you know, getting worms uh, of cotton and just soaking the heck out of them with liquid latex and forming them into whatever shape you want. I knew that I wanted kind of angry brow bones and I wanted very tired eyes. I wanted like a really sagging, angry face. When it comes to, to wrinkles or like bags under the eyes, I tend to use like smaller strips of cotton. Um, and then when it comes to kind of these sagging cheeks, I tend to use kind of a fatter strip of cotton and I just kind of stretch it out a little bit. And then this is where the, the clay tools come into play because since you have a lot of play time uh, with this, it takes a million and one years to dry, um, you can go ahead and spend a lot of time adding whatever indents you think will make it look right. Gotta make those eyebrows look extra angry. Also, if you build it up more, the more sunken in it makes your eyes appear. And then here's some skinnier worms for the forehead wrinkles, like I mentioned. If the cotton is sticking to you a lot, the solution is really just add more and more liquid latex. The latex will really give you the freedom that you need. There's the clay tool for the, uh, for the forehead. This process, as you can tell, is very, very patient. I think overall, this mask took me about three days to do. So now I'm taking, I'm like kind of forming like a, a little tooth, which it's easy because you just took, you take like a little piece of cotton and then you just dunk it in the latex and you just form it into a tooth shape with your fingers. And since we have our latex base down, it's gonna have something to cling onto. And you get to look like these. So this is the next day, as you can tell, because uh, liquid latex begins white and it often dries kind of yellowish. So now I'm gonna make the gums for the teeth. So I put kind of a strip of cotton over that and I'm using my clay tool to press the top of that cotton strip into the teeth. So it looks like, like normal gums. I'm gonna do the same for the top. And I kind of wanted like a chin sticking out a bit. Also make sure whatever elements you put in are going to fit into the surrounding areas. There's like another little bit for the chin. Cause again, I just, I was really attracted to the idea of just this chin like sticking out. More clay tool. I also decided that I wanted to have like the thing where the nose is rotted except for the tip of it. Uh, so decided to do that. I also made like this little ball that I put right between the eyebrows um, because you know, when like you, you really scrunch your eyebrows together, there's like that bulge in the middle. So then this is the day after that. I'm gonna be using the Skin Illustrator Flesh Tone Palette um, using a bunch of detailed brushes. And this is the Skin Illustrator Flesh Tone Palette um, in, I think it's Olive Adjuster. But I kind of started with just a coat over that. And then I'm using a detailed brush with uh, that dark brown. I'll, I'll put the name up because I cannot recall right now. 
This is also the part where I realized I should probably take the mask off of the life cast so I know for certain I have something intact. So it's just some loose powder on a brush. Um, and when you reach a certain point, you could just tear this thing straight up. And I went ahead and also cut off the, the excess uh, latex around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So we're resuming back with that um, dark brown alcohol paint. I'm filling in all of the dark areas so that you can get some more depth. So all of my wrinkles in between the teeth, under the eyes, the, the forehead, all of the things that I really wanted to sink in. And then this is another alcohol paint. I believe again, that's Rose Adjuster for the gums. And then this is Vein Tone. And then I'm using this really dark, dark brown from the eyeshadow palette to kind of strengthen the areas that I wanted to be really deep. And then I used the lightest uh, color, which I believe is rice paper from the Skin Illustrator palette. And I used that for the teeth. And I also used a little bit of that on all of the, the kind of raised areas. So to add a bit more contrast between the dark and the light areas. And also the tops of the gums. And that is about it. If you want to apply it, there's a couple different things you could do with a mask like this. What I've done previously is I've taken the elastic band and kind of the front of a face mask that you would use to, you know, protect your face from dust and you can glue that to the inside of the mask and that elastic band can, you know, go around your head and you could keep the mask on that way. If you want to have this more like glued to your face, um, what you'll probably have to do is cut off the bottom jaw and glue on the bottom part and, you know, the, the rest of the face on separately to make sure that you can actually talk. Whatever day it is that you're seeing this, I hope you're having a good one and I will see you the next time I do video stuff. Bye.